The court will now come to order as we sing our first verse. do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. By the virgin of justice, he was taken away. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Then Pilate summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. said to him, Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, 
He has blasphemed. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Lord Jesus, as we listen to Matthew, the tax collector, we remember that he turned his life around when he met you, no longer treasuring money, but valuing more his relationship with you. Help us, we pray, to treasure you above all else and to put our value in your hands. For we know that by your suffering, death, and resurrection, you showed the world how precious we are to you. In your beloved name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from Hosea and Jeremiah. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he who will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets, I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Here ends the reading. Again, um, we will be singing and saying the psalm. The very first line is where we will begin singing, although it is not bold tonight. be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. I always trust in you. Remember. 
remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Because the Lord is righteous and good, he teaches sinners the path they should follow. He leads the humble in the right way and teaches them his will. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his decrees. A reading from Romans. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that we will, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Here ends the reading. You're able for, to welcome the gospel. The Holy Gospel comes to us tonight from Mark, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. to the witness stand Matthew, also called Levi. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. 
According to the records we have, you are a tax collector of the Roman Empire. I was a tax collector. As such, you were hired to sit at a toll booth along the road leading from the Sea of Tiberias, also called Galilee. There you collected a set tax on the fish or merchandise being taken to the market. Your employer already paid the tax in contract with the Romans and was allowed to charge a certain amount over his, that as his profit. He then hired people like you to collect that tax plus the profit. Is that correct? Yes. It is well known that the corruption was rampant in this system. Both the owner of the contract and the person in your position, Matthew, the, tax collect the collector of the tax, overcharged and skimmed off the top. In addition, since you represented the Roman opp oppressors, you were hardly popular. Yet sneers were a small price to pay for the comfortable living your profiteering could afford. And you did have friends, other sinners, we weren't all like that. But as to the day in question, you were sitting in your tax booth and this man, Jesus, came up to you and out of the blue said, follow me. And you dropped everything and followed him. Is that correct? Yes. Had you ever met him before? Had dealings with him? Heard him preach? No. But in the work I did, I would usually catch the latest news. And this Jesus, everyone was talking about the wonderful rabbi who preached about God, concerned for all people, healed the sick, and best of all, who accepted people whom others neglected. So, when he looked at me peering, it seemed into my very soul, and when he didn't turn away in disgust, but rather looked at me with love and acceptance, well... I simply couldn't resist his call. I'm sure that was a moving experience. Let's move on. I understand you invited him to your home for dinner and he accepted. And there were other guests at dinner as well. Religious types? Priests? Rabbis? Not exactly. When people heard that Jesus was coming to my house, of all places, they just sort of invited themselves along. They were people like me, other tax collectors, business associates, people who did the kinds of work that made them outcasts, peasants who have to work too hard to observe all laws and rituals, and there were admittedly a number of prostitutes and thieves as well. A so-called religious leader, a representative of God, surrounded by a house full of sinners, that certainly says something about this Jesus. Oh, there were some Pharisees hanging around the perimeter. I could tell from the looks on their faces that they weren't pleased. They even asked some of the disciples why Jesus was eating with tax collectors and sinners. Oh, the scorn and criticism that dripped off every word. But Jesus overheard them and said the most provoca provocative thing. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, he said, but the sick. Why is that so profound? And what does it have to do with this self-styled religious leader, this ignorant Jewish carpenter who has, what, who has been affirming sinners instead of telling them to give up their wrong ways and become observant followers of the law? He simply comes across as vague and misleading. That's hardly true. Jesus' message, his entire ministry, led with a call to repent, to turn away from your old ways, to turn toward God's ways. Plus, he went on to explain himself. He quoted Hosea, where God spoke through the prophet saying, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And what is that supposed to mean? From what I remember learning from the rabbi as a child, that was God's condemnation of the priest of Israel, a judgment of their emphasis on performing perfect rituals rather than teaching the people how to fulfill the covenant. 
how to be God's people. God was telling the so-called religious leaders that they were to blame that they were to blame for the immorality and ignorance of the people. Who are you to give me who are you to give me and this jury a lesson on Jewish history? This isn't history. It speaks up to today. Jesus was comparing the Pharisees of his day with the priest of Hosea's time. The Pharisees were following rigorous observances of laws and rituals and demanded that everyone else follow their example. Yet, they were failing to teach people of God's love. The letter of the law was superseding the spirit of the law, a law that instructs us how to be family, unite with fathers and with each other in a bond of mutual, respectful, and self-effacing love. I've heard about enough. If the Pharisees could have seen their own sin, the same sin as that of the priest of, of, at Hosea's time, then they could have joined the rest of us sinners at the table. Jesus didn't come to build up the egos of the superficial religious, nor did he come to affirm those who try to save themselves by seeming to be good. Jesus sees into every human heart. He knows our sins is universal, and he calls into those hearts. He called into mine. He said, follow me. He said that to me, a man whose heart was filled with sin. And I did follow him. I followed him to the cross, and there he took my sin away. Your heart is filled with sin. All of ours are even the righteous who think they're being saved by doing right things follow him heresy blasphemy slander we need hear no more jesus came to call to befriend to save sinners like you and me how dare he you're done
Please stand if you're able. Let us pray for the whole world, the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, we give you thanks for all who, like Matthew, have heeded your call to discipleship. Help us to be ready to sacrifice those things that make us uncomfortable, that make us comfortable, but which may hinder our following you. O Lord, we give you thanks that in your time on earth you healed those who were sick in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that you bring healing to all who turn to you for help this day, including those we've named on our prayer list and those we name now silently or aloud. O oh Lord, we give you thanks for accepting us just as we are. Help us realize the depths of our sin sickness so that we may sincerely seek your forgiveness and more fully appreciate it. We give thanks that even when we feel like outcasts, we find a welcome at your table. Help us be a community of believers who follow your example and welcome not just the righteous, but also sinners and those whom society rejects. Lord, we give you thanks that you still speak to us today through your word and host us at your table. Help us not be like the Pharisees standing around the sidelines, but rather like Matthew, gladly receiving you in word and sacrament. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. We testify to the truth of Christ in the court, in the chambers of our human hearts. So I say to you, always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. And may the peace of Christ bless and keep you as you live your life as a testimony to him. Amen. Love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.